corporate Australia is opening its books, giving us a peek into how businesses have fared during six months of higher inflation and interest rates. This reporting season, expectations for big numbers are low. We had never before seen a period where analysts across the street were so downbeat on their profit growth estimates for Australian corporates. The impact of soaring prices and the Reserve Bank's 13 interest rate hikes will show up in varying ways as some businesses pull back on investment and consolidate costs while others benefit from consumers searching for a bargain. After coming under fire this time last year for increasing profit margins during a cost of living crisis, the supermarkets are now at the centre of an ACCC inquiry into price gouging. Their numbers will again be closely scrutinised. I don't think either of them will come out with, with kind of blow away, you know, fantastic results. Despite Australians watching their wallets, some retail businesses like West Farmers, the owner of Kmart, Target and Priceline, as well as JB Hi-Fi Group, will be ones to watch. They're probably the two big ones that will get a, a really good guide off you know, how the, the retailers are doing and, and, and how the broader economy is doing at the moment. With national house prices rising through the period, results from companies linked to the sector like Domain, Borrell and Bluescope will give clues to whether prices will hold up. REA Group has already reported with profit down 37% to $127 million. Competition for bank customers is increasing. The biggest lender, CBA, has been losing market share, so profits aren't expected to be as big as they were last year. That will be reflected in uh, net interest margins uh, as banks compete more aggressively for home loans and also for business loans. The other big three won't reveal their results until May. Despite the race to decarbonise, the lights have been shot out of battery critical metals nickel and lithium. So companies like Pilbara Minerals, IGO and South32 aren't expected to deliver good news. While ASX heavyweights, BHP, Rio Tinto and Woodside are big enough to drive down the entire share market if they deliver poor results. The big story of course is the slowdown in China, so companies will reduce uh, investment in projects. They may even hold on to cash, uh, meaning we won't see an increase in dividends from some of those big miners. Australian firms are known for paying big dividends, but with the economy slowing, those payments may be smaller this time around. I think if companies are able to maintain or increase their dividends, then investors can confidently look through the, some of the conservative outlook statements that management might be making. Company forecasts will be crucial as investors search for positive signs ahead. But analysts warn it could be too soon for that. This is not necessarily an environment where either corporates or investors want to get ahead of themselves in terms of thinking that all the challenges are behind us. The bumpy road to recovery isn't over yet.